Put on your Secretary of Homeland Security hat. Right. It's 2008. Greatest threat to the United States of America today? Mm, I think between Iran and just the, the, the challenge of international terrorism, and I think uh, the two are connected. What's the greatest opportunity then for the next president, do you think? I think the greatest opportunity for the next president is to uh, adopt an approach vis-a-vis uh, -vis these and other enemies that includes uh, not only the military option, but understands the real value of public diplomacy, understands the value of developmental assistance, because particularly as we take a look at uh, terrorism, those, those areas that are so, such fertile ground uh, for the jihadist appeal, for the appeal of the extremists. Uh, it's, one, you, 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 it's one thing to kill or apprehend an ideologue, but you have to undermine an ideology, and that you can't do unless you've started to meet real human needs. And I think that's the area that uh, the next administration will ask to focus on. Engaging the hearts and minds. Hearts and minds. In the war for hearts and minds, are we winning, losing, or is it a draw? Well, right now, if we're lucky, it's a draw. If we're lucky. Yeah, if we're lucky, it's a draw, because historically, this country has shied away from the recognition, and, and maybe it's part of the essential failure of leadership to demonstrate uh, that when we deal with issues of uh, poverty, illiteracy, illness, uh, that we begin to change the culture of a community. We help to begin to build civil societies and civic institutions at the end of the day. Those are the kind of countries you want to deal with, but you don't do it uh, through your military. You do it through uh, foreign aid. This next president will have the challenge of changing those hearts and minds. What should the next president, what could the next president do to really make a difference over time in these attitudes, do you think? For the past several years, because of 9-11, uh, much of the time that our president has traveled around the world, uh, the primary issue that he was dealing with was the war on terror, the war against the jihadists and extremists. And that still has to be a high priority for the next president. But as we engage with the rest of the world in both public and private conversations, and perhaps even more importantly, public conversations, the portfolio of America's interest and collaboration in getting things done has to go beyond war and terror and military. It has to go to addressing some of these other needs that we've discussed with this program. And I think the president's personal engagement, personal engagement and personal travel, hopefully with strong bipartisan support at home, will allow for us to begin. And I, I truly believe we can recapture um, uh, um, the, the, the respect and the awe with which we're presently not held. I mean, there's a, still a wonder about America, and that's one of the advantages of opening the doors. There's a soft power of people seeing how we live and how we operate. But I think the next person, president, hopefully Senator McCain, I believe he'll do that because by his nature he's an internationalist, will tie in our national security with our economic security and say both are advanced if we address some of the more human needs of the world around us.